So, I want to review the plugin system in order, but here's the thing. Battle Phoenix is the first plugin system beat em on with product number 114, and of course I've already reviewed that guy. And then next up are Iron Cyclops at 115 and Proto 1 at 160. So these guys are next up chronologically, and they're also really super bland and boring compared to the rest of the plugin system. I mean, don't they look like about the most generic and featureless beat em on you've ever seen? And even the battle beat em on Proto 1 and 2, I know they're weaker, fiddly, and have crappy limbs, but at least they had a little more personality going on than this. So on top of reviewing the system in release order, I'm also kind of just trying to get these guys over with, to be completely honest with you. Then again, I can see how this blandness was probably intentional, for Proto 1 at least. Just like Battle Beatemon's Proto 1, I think this was probably also meant to be a sort of self-insert Beatemon that you could imagine as your own, whereas, you know, all the other ones were obviously associated with characters from the show slash manga. I mean, yeah, Dr. Tomino is on the box, but who gives a shit about Dr. Tomino? So, in that way, I could see how these might appeal to you. The Iron Cyclops looks pretty god-awful to me. I mean, doesn't it? It just looks like a weird, tacky mess that clashes. Like, a pink and green core. What? I can see how these robotic-looking stickers are kind of appropriate, but then the other ones, what are they even going for? It just feels like they were completely out of ideas and just gave up. If you were a completionist collector like myself, this is the perfect guy to put in the back of the shelf. Wow, oh, the ramp, ooh. Nice. But this review isn't gonna stop with just these two, because there's also Proto 2, Proto 3, and Proto 4. These are technically called JBA Proto 1 to JBA Proto 4, but I'm just gonna call them Proto 1 to Proto 4. You cool with that? You're gonna have to be, alright? None of these guys have product numbers, instead getting a little special symbol in the corner of the box, similar to what limited edition Super Beatemon get, and also Holy Cerberus had that too. So Proto 2 and 3 are actually just recolors of Proto 1. They come with the exact same parts, just different stickers and obviously a different core color. And while it's more accurate to say Proto 4 is a recolor of Iron Cyclops with different stickers. And Proto 4's stickers are the most different from Proto's 1 to 3 too. Now in terms of aesthetics, I mean, take your pick. For me, Iron Cyclops is far and away the worst one, obviously, but the other ones, it's a little harder to choose between. I like Proto 3 the most, just because it's vibrant, it's yellow clear. Now with Protos 2, 3, and 4 all being glorified recolors of Proto 1 and Iron Cyclops, that means, really, we have two main beat -em on categories to compare here. Now, we're gonna call Proto 1, 2, and 3 Category 1, and then Iron Cyclops and Proto 4 are gonna be Category 2, just to make this a little bit simpler simpler for comparison's sake. Category 1, Category 2. Alright? Alright. So all the Category 1 protos actually come with two sets of hold parts, Type A and Type B. Type A is an Emblem Charge-esque power booster, and Type B is basically regular hold parts. The Type A set have these little extensions sticking sideways through the forearms where these power pads attach. They're pretty small though, so it hurts a little bit to push them, but it toughens up your fingers, though for life. And for when you have the Type B hold parts in, you get to fill in the arm gaps with these little filler pieces. So after some testing, it turns out the Category 1 beat em on all seem to perform pretty much identical to each other, as you'd expect. And then same goes for Category 2. So now, we're basically comparing three types of hold parts against each other. Type A, Type B, and Category 2, being these compression roller hold parts. Okay, so let's start with Category 1 and then go to type A. So the type A hold parts get about 3.5 to 4 meters per second base, and then when you boost them, you get 5.5 to about 6.5 meters per second boosted. 
and then with the type B hold parts, you actually get four to four and a half meters per second base, and then obviously they don't have a boost. But one thing that I do like is you don't have to avoid gripping that one spot to avoid an accidental power boost. So that's actually a little bit of a bonus. Now initially, I really didn't anticipate this. When I was first looking at this, I always wondered what the heck was the point of the type B hold parts? Why wouldn't you just leave in type A, right? And then just avoid that spot, you know, and then just have base power and still have the power boost. Now in general, I think that's probably a reason you should probably stick to type A. But I mean, if you don't want to bother with the power boost, the type B is a really good alternative. I mean, four to four and a half meters per second base, that's friggin competitive. That's like blazing Kaiser levels of power. And honestly, it feels pretty effortless and it feels a lot less janky because you don't have all those little rubber pieces and tiny little parts that can fall off. Though I will say swapping the hold parts is nothing like what you would do for say balance versus roller hold parts in the zero two system. Due to the plug-in system design, you have to take the whole friggin thing apart. You have to take off the feet, take off the trigger, take off the back hatch, and then you do have to split the core in half, but to do that, you have to take off the face. But to take off the face plate, you have to unscrew these two tiny little screws that you need a tiny little screwdriver to get them off. And then even once you got the screws out, you gotta wiggle it out because it's got this super tight peg keeping it on. And that's probably the worst part of the whole transition. The first few bits or whatever, even unscrewing isn't that bad, but like wiggling it off of here was a pain in the ass. So this is definitely something that you're not gonna wanna do all the time. So if you're gonna pick a default mode, it still makes the most sense to just stick with type A, right? And then... <sighs> Things get a little complicated when we look over at category two, because you see, at base, category two roller hold parts have four to four and a half meters per second, which matches the type B hold parts base, but that's all the type B hold parts have. But then, boosted, the category two hold parts only get five to five and a half meters per second, whereas the type A hold parts maxed out at five and a half to six and a half meters per second. So category one's type A hold parts have a weaker base than category two, but they have a higher max, while the type B hold parts match the category two base, but then they lack that power boost. So there's no completely clear winner here until you look at the rollers. Now, this wasn't a problem I really had with Iron Cyclops, but with Proto 4, I noticed multiple times one of those rollers kept on popping out. Now, the thing about my Proto 4 is it's actually used, so you know, I don't know exactly how much mileage the previous guy got out of this thing, but that's also kind of irrelevant because that means what? After a certain amount of usage, this thing's just gonna start decomposing and falling apart while you're just trying to shoot it. I mean, that sounds like a zero system beat em on to me, and super beat em on, especially plug in system and beyond, should be above that kind of crap. So, honestly, in a case where, you know, it was kind of wishy washy as to whether category one and category two, which side was better, when you got one side that has a little part that's gonna fall off, I mean, if I'm splitting hairs, that's a big enough hair that I can split that I can pretty safely say that makes Protos one to three better. You can get roughly the same results without having to worry about about that crap. I mean, plug-in system beat em on in general are super solid, especially compared to later series, without any crappy little arm pieces or fiddly bits that fall off, while also having pretty damn solid power. So why compromise that at all for rollers that honestly, how much are those really gonna do for you? Those cannot do enough to justify possibly falling off during a game? That's completely disastrous. You know, imagine if you were going to a gun range and you shot a gun that fell apart while you were using it, would you ever use that gun? gun especially if you had the option of another one that never did that so that's pretty much what splits it you know it was really unfortunate up to that point they were pretty well neck and neck but that one tiny little piece tears it if you're trying to go for a proto beat em on something from category one is what you're gonna want to focus on though i will say the category two power pads are probably better just because they're bigger you got more surface area it hurts less to push them and the way they're designed they've got a little crevice that you can kind of nestle your finger in so that doesn't hurt as much and then thankfully you can swap them around so since I like category one better you can take the category two power pads chuck them on and I guess you've got the ideal proto beat em on and here's one little side note it actually doesn't really play into comparisons much but my proto 4 came with these weird grip sticker things I, I've seen other beat em on like the red battle Phoenix from Fukubako 1999 having grip stuff like this is it tar it feels like weird sort of gross dried up tar 
I wouldn't personally want to apply this just because, like, no, ew. But with it, I, I mean, I can see how it gives you extra grip friction, but as a sweaty-fingered man-child, I've never really had trouble gripping my Japanese marble shooters, so I can't really count that as much of a positive. As a whole, the plug-in system is filled with lots of wild and wacky gimmicks, but as per usual, the end effectiveness of those is debatable and all over the place, so yeah, these guys are boring. But at the end of the day, they're good power types, and they're super solid, they get the job done. Boring, but functional sets that they're actually pretty good as a first beat em on especially if you can get a decent deal on them. They get the job done, and they don't have any fiddly, crappy parts that fall apart or break. Sad to say, that's not a given with every beat em on series. Out of the five, Proto-1 and Iron Cyclops tend to be less in demand than the other ones, and the other ones are kind of just more rare in general. So if you want to play with the plug-in system, they're probably going to be your cheapest way. Alongside Blast Griffin. Blast Griffin's usually cheaper, but that guy's kind of a different entity. Now there's actually also a set called the Plugin Strongest Set, which comes with a blue clear Proto-1, a purple clear magazine, and a yellow clear barrel. Perfect types are usually defined as having power, rapid fire, and accuracy, so here you have a pretty solid version of that. It's not the most common set out there, but compared to other Super beat -em on limited editions, it's actually very common. And by very common, I mean you'll see this thing pop up probably three or four times a year on like Yahoo auctions. I know that sounds crazy to more casual collectors, but if you're a major Super beat -em on collector, you know that's actually super common in a world where some beat -em on you're lucky to show up once in a decade. Now the biggest downside is it'll probably cost you like a hundred bucks or more, but it's a perfect type it's really reliable, it looks really cool, and uh, you know, these Super beat -em on attachments aren't usually that cheap. Plus it's clear, so you know, me likey. In the end, do I recommend any of these? Kind of like I said before, if you want to pay a little extra tether for a super solid power type that's more solid than something like a Blazing Kaiser or a Cobalt Saber Fire, or if you want a relatively cheap plug-in system beat em on, or as always, if you're a completionist. Or, if you actually think these things look super cool, 